something green. Really nice color. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm in Leeds, North Dakota, at the site of where a boarding house was once active. It showed up on a 1908 map. It's possible that this building behind me was once the boarding house. I got permission to explore and excavate the backyard and search for remnants from those times. I'll take a walk back and see what's going on. Here's the backyard. There was once a carriage shed out by that big tree in the back. It's long gone. There's a lot of ground to cover here, but at least we're in a mowed yard. Found a place to dig out back by this propane tank. I kicked some marks in the ground. Not sure if they're visible. But the pit's roughly three by six, maybe three by seven. Looks like there's a propane line going right through the center. So I'll have to be careful opening this up. There it is. You can see the line drops down from the tank there and goes just about dead center through the pit. I'll have to work around this. I decided to dig half of it down as kind of a test hole. We're getting mixed signals on age. There's some junk from when they trenched in the natural gas line also. Put a put the bottom to a drugstore bottle that's pre-World War One, in about three feet, and we're into some kind of use layer. The ground softened up and color changed. Definitely an outhouse pit. Some signs of some good age. A prescription bottle from the early 1900s. And a Goodyear comb. Unbreakable. Hmm. Uh-oh. What do we got here? Looks like some kind of extract bottle. Circa 1920. Hmm. Oh, I got another one. Oh, looks like it has better age. Rugby, North Dakota. Wild. WBM company. That's World War One era. Wow. Well, let's clear this spot has some good age, so we're gonna take down the other half of it. We started already and found a cable line intact, so we'll continue on. We took it down level across. There's the utility lines we found. 
Got a couple pieces on the way out. Down about four feet. One here, one over here. I uncovered this one first, so I guess I'll see what this is first. Looks broken. Broken extract bottle. Oh, nope. Dr. S. Pitcher's Castoria was a castor oil medicine. And a lamp chimney, possibly some outhouse residue in it. <laughs> We're in the right era. We have our first whole piece out. Let's see here. Looks like a prescription bottle. You can see the woodland side, definitely an old outhouse pit. Let's see. <laughs> the corners have blown out. Everything's been broken in here so far. Wild. It's a good age though, 1905 I suppose. 1900, 1905. Dakota. Right up against the woodland side, I saw another piece sticking out here. It's like a prescription bottle. Huh. Circa 1925. There'd be a blue ribbon logo there. The age has been mixed up in this top layer so far. It's kind of unusual. I have to keep digging. Oh, my shovel hit something solid. Looks like possibly a beer bottle. Tool top beer. Hmm. Not sure I've seen that mark before. NB6. Down here with two more pieces on the way out. Looks like some kind of liquor bottle and maybe a chamber pot lid. That's a fragment. Again, great age. Really nice color. And some kind of liquor bottle. Machine made. Circa 1915. I just pulled out the top of a cream can. There's no tag on it. But this pit is widening out. You can see one of the woodland sides, one of the boards collapsed a bit at one point. Looks like we have something in here. What is that? Some kind of malted milk container, I think, Racine, Wisconsin. Uh, S.C. Johnson and Son. Oh wow, that's the company that's still in business. Some kind of apothecary or something. Looks like there's another one behind it. Oh, some kind of prescription bottle. Machine made. Hmm. I wonder if I pull this board. Not much left of it. Hmm. Mixed up age in this pit. There's a tooled top. Three more pieces on the way out. We got one over there, one here. And I'll start with this one. Oh, it's another piece to that chamber pot lid. A really nice blue color. 
ironstone. Machine made prescription bottle. Early machine made. And uh, some kind of broken food container preserve jar. The top's chipped. Hmm. Another one of those Dakota lines. Note that it has no connection to the Dakotas. It was just a style that the glass company was selling. Hmm. There's been a ton of stuff coming out here so far. We've got a couple more pieces. This looks to be some kind of sample cologne or perfume. Tool top. And I'm guessing this is a ketchup bottle. Chipped top. Tool top though. Hmm. Down about five feet. Uh, everything's been mixed up so far. I'm wondering if the pit had been cleaned out. Hopefully, there'll be some intact layers when we get down further, but right now we have a couple pieces on the way out. One here, one here. Some kind of a prescription bottle, machine made. Looks like a beer. Some kind of jar. Okay. Some kind of preserved jar. Machine made. I dug it down to about four feet across, then a couple more feet for a test hole. I hit the water table. That's about where the pit bottomed out. That indicates the water table has been about the same here for at least a hundred years. Here's the hall, that chamber pot lid, a couple pitchers, cream can, an iron, a couple food containers, cosmetic containers, pill bottles. Uh, some of the more interesting pieces, a couple Leeds drugstore bottles from the Peterson Brothers, two different styles, a Leeds Bottling Works soda bottle fragment. Couple Drury's beers from St. Paul, the green one, I think would have been a holy grail piece. That tooth rush there on the right, some combs, Vaseline container, whiskey flask, prescription bottles, sample toiletry, extracts, ketchup on the right, beer on the left, broken lamp top. That's about it, we'll get it filled back in. Oh, there it is. There's a ton of glass down here. Kick some marks in the ground where the parameters are. It's roughly three by five. We'll get it opened up. We got the topsoil off. We're digging into some coal pieces, likely from stoves, burned coal. Haven't found a whole lot yet, but Everything here seems to be circa 1930s. We'll continue. dug into some kind of clay cap. There's a solid layer here. I've probed down, felt some glass. These pits were usually capped off with clay. 
So we'll start digging into it. Oh well, inkwell. This is one that would be refilled and just basically set on someone's desk. That's cool. It has been a nightmare chopping through these roots, but we're just about through and I noticed something down here. So the top of the bottle sticking out. Here we go. Looks like some kind of perfume bottle. Tooled top. Hmm. Ooh. Kirk and Company, Chicago. I have to do some research on that. to a candy dish or something. It's broken. Yeah. Broken drugstore bottle. Another Rex Oval. see some lime that was thrown in the outhouses to neutralize the smell and kind of sterilize it. Let's see if I can wedge this bottle out. Some more broken windows. Uh, it's got some really good age. Philadelphia Oval style I believe. Wow. It's got to be 1890s. pit is finished out was four by four four feet deep here's the hull some broken glassware broken windows drugstore bottles that inkwell and perfume bottle floral pattern plate some more glassware this was definitely an outhouse pit that was in use in the early 1900s circa 1905 We'll get it filled back in. We are still on the laundry business lot. Finished the other pit, probed out another one. Roughly three by three. There's some glass down there, so we'll open it up and see what's going on. The topsoil is off. We started digging into some ash fragments down here. Here's the find so far. We've got the interior part to a dry cell battery, chop house bone, slip glaze, crock or jug part, glass fragment. Definitely in an outhouse pit. There's some undigested seeds. You can see the color change there also. And down below, we've got some kind of piece on the way out. Got it somewhat loose. Let's see here. This jar. Looks like a food jar. 
early machine made. You can see we're in about 1915 to 1920 right now. That's a good start. That's an older plate. Radisson WS George. Beater frock, slip glazed. Seeds. The other part of the beater crop. Hmm. They call those beater crocs because folks would beat eggs in them, I guess. Oh, that's a drinking glass there. 1920s, I suppose. Two cups. Same gold edge pattern as that plate I pulled up earlier. That's kind of cool. piece some kind of generic type bottle good age though pre-world war one Almost seltzer. Early machine made. And oh, big prescription bottle. Machine made. I just pulled out this tool top whiskey bottle. And when I pulled it out. Another Bromo seltzer bottle came out. Early machine made. Looks like there's all kinds of stuff down in here. This was a well used pit. intact. Racine Bavaria. Never dug one of those. Ooh, that is something there. Wow, that pattern. Dakotas. Ah, these 
tree roots are brutal. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Hmm, some kind of paneled bottle. Is it an extract or something? And has some kind of extract tool top. I think we're getting close to bottom. Still a ways to go, I think. And what do we have here? Looks like another extract. Huh. I found bottom, so I'm gonna take it across and see what else is there. There should be a few more pieces in here. Another one of those Racine Bavaria plates. Prescription bottle. Circa 1920. Hmm. Panel bottle, extract or something, maybe a medicine, and another. Top prescription bottle increments on the front. Hmm. Another one. Victor style. loaded. A machine made prescription bottle. A couple more bottles in the corner here. Looks like an extract. Not sure about this other one. Pull this one up first. Extract and another extract. Hmm, partial label. Can't make it out though. Huh. Is this thing green? Oh, wow. The Paiso Company. Paiso's Cure. I believe this was a cannabis infused remedy of some sort. Really nice color. Look at that.
nothing home on it. Good edge though. Oh, early machine made. I guess this has an earlier style. World War One era. Well, here's the kind of ornate plate. Notice there was a stamp on it, PMB, Mojo's France, hand painted. This thing is really something. Some kind of chemical bottle, possibly, machine made. Oh, this is looks like a liquor flask. Yeah, early machine made liquor flask. I noticed underneath it, there's another, oh, okay, it's the top to an extract bottle. Continue on. Okay, this thing's broken. Broken prescription bottle. Here in the other corner, looks like another prescription bottle. Tool top. Septic. Aseptic. Must have been a line from the glass company. Here's the hull. Everything dated from about 1910 to 15. Some of the dinnerware, that one or piece, the utility piece there in the left bottom corner and the rest was fairly generic. Some extract bottles, small pill bottle in the center there. Some bromo seltzers, the Piso company. Couple generic pieces, some beater crocs, food jar, drinking glasses, a couple whiskeys and a ketchup bottle, and some prescription bottles. Well, we'll get it filled back in.